So here we have a related rates problem that deals with an angle of elevation. So our problem says a balloon rises at a rate of 3 meters per second from a point on the ground 30 meters from an observer. Find the rate of change of the angle of elevation of the balloon from the observer when the balloon is 30 meters above the ground. And so how do we tackle this problem? Well, the first thing that you should always do when you try to solve a related rates problem is to draw a picture for your scenario. Now, I've already got part of a picture drawn here, but it's not complete. We don't have anything labeled. We just have our balloon rising from the ground and our little observer guy here who's watching that balloon rise. And so let's complete this diagram or this picture by labeling the different variables in this scenario. So for one, we know that this balloon that's rising is at a point on the ground 30 meters from the observer. And so we know we have a measure from the balloon to the observer. And so I'm going to label that as X. And then we also know that we're going to have some kind of measurement from the balloon to the ground. And so I'm going to label that with Y. And I think these two variables made the most sense if you think about this as one of the quadrants of a coordinate plane, right? We have our X axis and our Y axis. And so now that we have labeled the distance from the balloon to the observer, and we've labeled the height from the ground to the balloon, what else do we know about this problem? Well, we're told that the balloon is rising at a rate of three meters per second. So that means that the height of this balloon, or Y, is changing at a rate of three meters per second. And so that's going to be one of our rates that we're gonna to wanna to write down. And so we know that the rate at which Y is changing with respect to time is equal to three meters per second. And we also know that it is rising from a point on the ground 30 meters away from the observer. And so that means that this X right here is equal to 30 meters. And then we know that we want to find the rate of change of the angle of elevation of the balloon from the observer. Now, we actually didn't label our angle yet. And so the angle is going to be the angle from the observer to the balloon. And so if we were to draw an imaginary line here from the balloon to the observer, it would be this angle right here, which I'm going to label with theta, that we are interested in here. This is the angle of elevation from the observer to the balloon, right? As the balloon rises, the angle from the observer to that balloon is going to get larger and larger. And so this is the rate of change that we are looking for and that we do not know. So I'll write that we don't know the rate at which theta is changing with respect to time, and that's what we are looking for. And finally, we know that we wanna find that rate of change when the balloon is 30 meters above the ground. So we're looking for a specific point in time when y is equal to 30 meters. And so that's everything that we know about this problem. And so before we make an equation and represent this scenario, I just wanna make a note of a few things here. For one, our value of x is not going to change throughout this problem. The balloon is only moving in the y direction. It's not moving left or right, it's only moving up. And so the balloon is always going to be 30 meters away from the observer in terms of the measurement on the ground. However, the height or the y value is changing. So we have a variable here x that's not changing, and we have a variable y that is changing, right? We have this rate at which y is changing with respect to time. And then of course we also have that angle that we know is changing, and so we wanna keep that in mind as well. All right, so then what kind of equation can we form that's going to relate these three different variables we have, x, theta, and y? What can we do here? Well, if you think about it, we actually have formed a triangle in this scenario. We have one side here, we have another side here, and we have another side here. And so if we draw a triangle to represent this scenario, we can use this to help us form an equation that's going to relate these variables. So let me just quickly label this so that it matches up with our picture. So we have y here, x here, and theta here. And so what do we know about a triangle? How can we relate an angle and two sides of a triangle? Well, this is going to involve a little trick that we know about trig functions, and that is SOHCAHTOA. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but here's how this is helpful. These are little acronyms to help us remember how to use trig functions to relate sides of triangles with a particular angle. And so our first one here is for sine, and it's telling us that the sine of the angle is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Our second one says that for cosine of the angle, it's equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And for our third one here, we have the tangent is equal to the opposite divided by the adjacent side. And so if we look at a triangle here that matches up with the triangle in our problem, where we have our angle in this bottom right corner, 
we have the hypotenuse over here, which is the longest side. We have our opposite side, which is across from our angle. And then we have the adjacent side, which is the other side connected to our angle that is not the hypotenuse. And so what we wanna do is look at what two sides we wanna relate in our scenario. And if we go back to our triangle here, we can see that we're looking at the opposite side, y, from our angle, and we're looking at the adjacent side, x, to our angle. And so then which of our three acronyms, so, ka, and toa, are we gonna use to relate y and x in this case? Well, it looks like we would wanna use toa, or tangent, which is gonna relate the opposite side, or y, to the adjacent side, x. And so if we do that, we can write the equation that tangent theta is going to be equal to y divided by x. Now remember, when you write an equation to represent your related rates problem, you wanna substitute any of your variables that are not changing in this problem with what they are equal to. So for example, as I mentioned earlier, our y variable is changing, right? The height is changing throughout this problem, but x is never changing. So we should actually replace this x with what it's equal to, 30 meters. That 30 meters is never going to change, so we'll just write 30. And so now we have an equation, tangent theta equals y divided by 30, that represents this scenario. And so now what we can do is move on with our related rates process and take the derivative of both sides of our equation with respect to time. And so if we do that, if we take the derivative with respect to time of both sides, we will have the following. We'll have the derivative of tangent theta, which is going to be secant squared theta, but then we need to multiply by the rate d theta dt. And this is because we're taking the derivative of a function defined with one variable with respect to another variable, right? This is where implicit differentiation comes into play. We're taking a derivative of tangent theta, which is one variable, with respect to t, a different variable. So we need to multiply by that rate, which says we're taking a derivative of theta with respect to t. And then we'll take the derivative of this side of the equation with respect to t. And so this is going to be equal to the derivative of y divided by 30. And so the derivative of y divided by 30 is just 1 30th. But once again, we're taking that derivative with respect to t. And so we need to multiply by a rate of dy dt, right? We're taking a derivative of y with respect to t. So dy dt. And so now we have taken a derivative of both sides of our equation with respect to t. And so now we need to remember what rate we're solving for here. And we are solving for d theta dt. That's what we wanna find. And so let's try to isolate that and divide both sides by secant squared theta. So we'll have that d theta dt is equal to one over 30 times one over secant squared theta times dy dt. And now we can actually simplify this because secant and cosine are related, right? Cosine theta is equal to one over secant theta. And that's because secant theta is equal to one over cosine theta. These two trig functions are directly related. And so because of that, if we have one over secant squared theta, that's gonna be equal to cosine squared theta. And so if we were to change that in our equation above, we would then have that d theta dt is equal to 1 30th cosine squared theta dy dt. And that's just gonna make it a little bit easier for us to solve for our rate d theta dt. Now this is typically the part of a related rates problem where we would plug in everything we know and then solve for our unknown rate. And so we do know what dy dt is, right? We know that that is three meters per second, but we do not know what theta is in this case, right? We do not have any value for theta. And so I'll add that over here. We do not know what theta is equal to. However, we can go back to what we know about triangles to find what it's equal to, right? And so if we go back to our special triangle here where we're looking at how we use trig functions to relate an angle to the different sides of a triangle, we know that we're gonna be using cosine. And so let's look at what cosine is on the triangle here. And so in this case, cosine is this middle term here, where if we're looking at a specific angle, cosine of that angle is gonna be equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And so in that case, that's going to be x divided by the hypotenuse, which we also don't know what it's equal to. And so this could get pretty complicated pretty quick, but we can actually find that as well. But let's do one thing at a time here. First, let's just label our hypotenuse here, and then let's rewrite our equation and then I think that's going to help us see what we need to do next. So we'll have d theta dt is equal to 1 30th times, now this is cosine squared, so we're gonna have this whole quantity 
squared, and we're gonna have the adjacent side, which is x divided by the hypotenuse h. And that's gonna be multiplied by dy dt. And so now I'm gonna clean up our work a little bit. So we just have this equation to work with, and then we'll talk about how to find our hypotenuse. All right, so now we wanna figure out what our hypotenuse is equal to so that we can finally evaluate this equation and find what d theta dt is equal to. And so now we're gonna to need to use another property about triangles that we know to solve for our hypotenuse for this triangle here. And so what we can do in this case is that we know at this specific moment in time where we wanna solve for that rate d theta dt, we know that our x is always gonna be equal to 30, but our y or our height is going to be equal to 30 as well, right? That's what we learned from our problem above. And so because we know what x and y are gonna be at that specific moment in time where we're solving for our rate, we can use those two values to solve for our hypotenuse by using an equation that is going to relate the three sides of a triangle. And so that's going to lead us to use the Pythagorean theorem. And the Pythagorean theorem says that x squared plus y squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. And so if we plug in the values we know, we know that x is equal to 30, so I have 30 squared. And we know that y is also gonna be equal to 30, so I have 30 squared. And that's gonna be equal to the hypotenuse squared. And so 30 squared plus 30 squared is gonna be 900 plus 900. So we're gonna have 1800 and that's gonna be equal to h squared. And so that means that h is gonna be equal to the square root of 1800. And so now we can plug this value in to our equation and now we can finally solve for d theta dt. And so if we do that, we're gonna have that d theta dt is equal to one over 30 times x, which we know is 30, so we'll plug 30 in there, divided by the square root of 1800 squared, and then dy dt we know is equal to 3, so we'll multiply that by 3. And so then d theta dt will be equal to 1 over 30, and then we can square each part of this quantity, so we'll have times 30 squared divided by 1800. Right, if we square the numerator, which is 30, we'll have 30 squared. And then if we square the denominator, we have the square root of 1800. So the square of a square root is just gonna be what's inside that square root. So we'll have 1800. And of course, this is still gonna be multiplied by three. And so then 30 squared is 900, and 900 divided by 1800 is just gonna be one half. And so d theta dt is equal to three over 30 times one half. I just moved this three on top of this 1 30th. And so now we have three times one and two times 30. And so we have three divided by 60, which means that d theta dt is gonna be equal to one over 20. And this is a rate at which our angle is changing with respect to time. And so that's going to be in radians per second. Because the rest of our rates are also measured in seconds, this is also going to be in seconds. If you want this to be in degrees, all you would have to do is multiply by 180 divided by pi, and that would give you the rate in degrees. But in this case, I'm fine with the rate in radians, and so that's going to be my final answer for this problem. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And if you found this video to be helpful and you enjoyed it, feel free to check out my channel where I have some other math related content such as lessons in calculus. But that's all I have for now, so I will see you next time.